This is Evolutionary Radio. This is your host, Trevor Karitz. And as always, Steve Smee is joining me. What's up, guys? What's going on? We have another special guest, Cody Montgomery. How's it going, buddy? What's up, guys? Thanks for uh, having me on here. Cody, I, I don't even know where to start. So three-time team national champion. You won the collegiate nationals as a teenager. You became an IFBB pro when you were 20. You did the Arnold Classic at 21. You now have a one-year-old. You did all this at 24, man. Like, at, at, like at, now I'm now I'm like I, I feel like I'm pretty successful, but after just rambling all that off, I'm like, what am I doing with my life? It's all about perspective, I think, right? So my first question for you is, I mean, you've obviously done very well at bodybuilding at a very young age. Where did this interest from bodybuilding come from? Uh, well, it all starts back to my younger days when I was about 14. Uh, I have an older brother. He is uh, three years older than me. Uh, and he started playing football in high school when he entered uh, in the ninth grade in Texas. We start high school in ninth grade. And so he started playing football and started going to the gym and I ended up kind of picking up going to the gym with him um, because I wanted to play football and following his footsteps uh, with all of that. Um, so I started to go to, to the gym with him like right along. I didn't have my, my license or anything like that. And I was about 14, 15, uh, well, I think it's 14, uh, going to Lifetime Fitness with him. And we, we started training together, started, uh, you know, I remember we used to take, uh, it, that old Inno explode in the bathroom together before you, cause we had a Jack and Jill uh, bathroom back when we lived at the parents crib and uh, we used to, you know, train together and all that kind of stuff. We started out and then I started to get kind of bigger than him. And obviously he's older than me, but he's kind of a skinnier guy. Now he's a uh, MIT. He's not anything to do with, uh, with lifting weights come to find out. But so he kind of got me interested in it. It was my older brother, football, that kind of thing. And I was in the gym basically lifting for, I would say, probably about a year. And then I had a guy approach me at, at the same gym because I had been consistently going to the same gym the whole time. Say that, you know, wow, you made a huge transformation. Um, and come to find out he owned a little supplement shop across the, across the street from the, the gym and offered to – helped me out, give me some supplements and kind of start giving me a diet. And then he started to kind of convince me to get on stage um, and offer me a sponsorship, uh, like not sponsorship, but to, to pay for my first show. Um, if I what, could, wait, what part of Texas was this? This was uh, McKinney, Texas, like McKinney, Plano, Texas, like DFW area. I grew Is up that in, a big uh, bodybuilding culture there? I know it's big on football. Um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's all, it's pretty oriented. I guess it's it, like Steve Kuklo. I mean, come to find out there's a lot of bodybuilders in DFW for sure. But at the time I didn't really know it. Um, it wasn't like he was some extraordinary bodybuilder. It was just more so that he had a love for, for the sport. And he saw that maybe I had a little bit of potential with it. Um, so you yeah, see I mean, bodybuild that you were bodybuilding and playing football at the same time. No, I basically did my first show and I quit uh, quit football right after that. Yeah. Uh, long story short, um, but I was a running back and it was just I was running back and linebacker and it was just like every time I remember after practice I would want to go lift weights bodybuilding style and I'd be all worn out and tired and I really you know was disappointing because you know I did a lot of practicing but it wasn't the kind of practicing I wanted to do I guess. Yeah. So. Football, football is really brutal. Like it's, yeah. it's amazing how brutal it is. Uh, well, so it's a lot of community stuff too, all of it. So, so you're probably what in your um, late high school days. So then what happened? So this you, is my early high school days. I did my okay. first show when I was a freshman in high school, and uh, basically, like, I went and won this show and didn't really know what I was doing. After stepping on stage, I I done a ton of sports growing up and. Pretty much, like I said, I dropped everything. I stopped football. I stopped. Um, I was actually a big-time golfer at the time. Um, just a lot of different sports that I played. I played almost everything growing up. And I was like, wow, this is the first time that I really felt like something was meant for me. Uh, I felt like this was God's calling, um, kind of, so to speak, uh, the first time I got on stage. Um, so I kind of just dropped everything and started to de dedicate myself to this. And I ended up linking up with some good people after that first show, after getting my name out there a little bit. 
and uh, found out that there's a really good community there in, uh, in North Texas for bodybuilding and uh, kind of took off from there and everything kind of started to transpire. So Cody, me, me and Steve, we've been doing this podcast for about six years now and you basically exploded on the scene. At a young age, where did that intuition come from where you were like, hey, I want to be a bodybuilder. I'm going to approach the best people and get them to help me. Because I mean, I think like I think when you're 18, you already had Hanny sponsoring you and you were, Aceto was already doing your nutrition. Is that correct? Um, not at 18. I started with uh, Aceto when I was about, just about to turn 20. I was like 19. Um, actually, when the, what was, yeah, no. I was, no, I was 20 when I started with, uh, when, when I started with Aceto. Um, I was with Hani back, back when I was 18, 19 uh, for those two years. Um, you know, I mean, honestly, everything kind of just, not to, to say it fell into my lap, but um, I could just kind of dreamed and I kind of believed that I could do it. And, you know, a lot of people along the way um, thought I was crazy or thought I was, you know, um, you know, probably crazy for thinking some of the stuff that I, that I thought I could do, um, especially going to like USA's, going to that first teenage nationals. I remember there was a lot of, uh, you know, people doubting me, I guess. And, and honestly, you know, going through that, uh, going through the teenage years, going through some of the, you know, just the things that life has thrown at me. Um, who, who, really, who, who, who doubted you, Cody? Like your family, friends, what? Like, I don't see how, how could my, anyone my, doubt you? My parents definitely doubted me. For like, sure. why? Why would they do that? Because like, I they, didn't, they didn't want you bodybuilding or they just well, didn't? They don't, I mean, they didn't really understand it. Mm -hmm. uh, my parents are really old school. You know, I think uh, they're so like- So your brother I mean, went to MIT, which is um, one of the, um, you know, toughest schools to get in in the country and you became a bodybuilder. So they probably felt- you know, they wanted you to kind of go the more, you know, all conventional best. route kind of thing, conservative they're, route or whatever. Yeah, they're much more conventional, much more old school um, with their thinking. And, and honestly, I'm much more new school as far as I'm going to make tomorrow whatever I want to make it. And I don't want to have a boss and I don't really, you know, want to adhere to all the things that society says we have to. And I've just kind of made my, made my own stride. And, uh, you know, I'm just taking it for what it is. And now, what do they think? I mean, they still want me to go to school. They still tell me that because um, they are, you know, not, I won't say stubborn, but they, you know, they're in their ways, but um, they're very proud of me and for everything that I've done. And I think they're a little bit of shock um, from all of it, especially, you know, early on when I, you know, called them after, you know, some of the, you know, initial things that happened after the USA's and some of the more life changing kind of aspects that made them kind of open their eyes and realize that, you know, I'm not just talking on my ass that, you know, things are actually um, happening and it's more we, than just talk. We, we've had the guys we've had on our podcast um, who are young as well. They have one thing in common for sure is they have their goals set on something and everything is just like, bam, like the laser focused on it. Yeah, it's tunnel So it seems like you're, you're like that too. And it just seems like if you laser focus on something, you can always accomplish it. Do you, do you see that in your life versus like some of your friends you grew up with who are kind of meandering like in their early to mid twenties. I have friends even my age today that I, that I from childhood friends that are still in La La Land. Like these are people divorced with two or three kids. They don't know what the hell they're doing. Yeah. Well, going back to some of those doubters and stuff, I mean, not to, not to hate on any of my friends. I think all my, all my friends that I call friends nowadays, um, you know, I'm truly thankful for them to be in my corner, but you know, I think even them uh, seeing all the sacrifices I made back in high school, you know, I missed out on prom. I never really went to football games to watch, you know, I was very, very focused, very dedicated, um, like you said, and I, I definitely get into the tunnel vision to where, you know, it hurt my, my friendships and, you know, just take away from all my, all aspects of my life. So, you know, for, for some people to see that now, I think they, they have a lot more respect for me um, to see where I've come because it, like I said earlier, it fell in my lap, it really didn't, you know, I had to sacrifice a lot of things and work really hard along the way. So Cody, we just had PJ on this podcast and he spoke extremely highly of you. He's like, Trev, you gotta get Cody on your show. Like he's, he's like way more wise than his age. He, he, he's <laughs> 24 years old, but he's got the wisdom of, of you know, an adult of, some, of someone in their fifties. 
and he, it's true. Like just emailing you, like you're extremely professional. You're exactly on time for this podcast. Like you're punctual. You remind me a lot of a young Jay Cutler. Where, where did this come from? You know, like most 18 year olds don't have that. Like, like you at a young age decided, Hey, I want to make bodybuilding my career. And you took it as a job. Where, where did you learn that? I mean, honestly, it's funny that you mentioned Jay. Uh, first of all, PJ is like a dad to me. He's been nothing but the best. And honestly, I, I can I can say um, knowingly that I probably wouldn't be here bodybuilding with everything that's happened in my life uh, today without Blackstone, without, without PJ um, behind me um, in that whole relationship. So I'm extremely thankful for that. Um, but just going on to just going on to the other note, <clears throat> it was um, PJ and then who else did you mention? Sorry. I, I basically just said like you're wise beyond your age like where did you learn oh, sorry i totally had a last train of my thought but you had mentioned jay cutler i see um, you learned of him yeah yeah going back to that i thought it was funny that you mentioned him because uh i pretty much have idolized and look up to him the entire time uh, i would say him and flex lewis have been the two people that i've really looked up to if if you know i've looked up to anybody as far as uh, a mentor or someone that i um, would like to 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 be half the person uh, that they can be. Uh, I really have a lot of respect for both of them, not just the bodybuilders they are, but the people that they are. Um, you know, Flex, the father that he is, uh, you know, the man that he is off stage, not just being the bodybuilder that he is, and Jay, you know, being the businessman that he is and, and being as polite and professional as he is to everyone. Um, and, you know, the further I've gone along in this and the kind of the deeper I've gotten and, the more reality I've seen, the more respect I have for them, just because I, you know, I see it from, you know, kind of behind the shutters, I guess you could say. And, uh, you know, I've, I've been very fortunate to, to look up to them. And now, you know, I can call both of them my friends and, you know, I could call them, you know, on my phone if I needed something. And, you know, that's pretty, pretty damn cool to say. And uh, I'm very, very thankful to have guys like that to look up to and, and, you know, kind of try to step uh, as close as I can in their footsteps. How's the networking go when it comes to all this? Like, how do you guys keep in touch? Are you on the phone with these guys, like, we, on a weekly basis? Well, um, you're, where, are you at, where are you at right now, by the way? I live, uh, like, kind of Sarasota, like, uh, about an hour outside of Tampa. Okay, like, what, what is that all about? Like, every uh, bodybuilder is moving to Florida. What is that all about? Yeah. Okay, so Trevor I, wants to move to Florida, too, next year. Literally, Cody, I said, <laughs> I just told Steve before we started recording, next year I'm moving to Florida. Oh, that's what's up, man. Congratulations. That's, uh, I won't say too many bad things. It's just damn hot, man. It is so hot. Yeah, today was really hot. Today yeah, was I, I live. Hot. I live in Winnipeg. Do you have any idea how cold Winnipeg is? Wow. Guess where I'm. Oh, guess where I was born. Where? I bet you can't. I guess. I mean, I guess you didn't do your research that good. But <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> Anchorage, Alaska. You were born in Alaska, really? Yeah, my parent. My my parents are engineers there in like the oil field, so I was born up oh, there. Oh, okay. I, I that explains in, your love for hunting and fishing, then. Well, I grew up in Texas, so it's kind of both. Both, okay. uh, both places. I'm Texas. a big, big fisherman, man. You got to come on this side of Florida, not Sarasota. This side of Florida is where the fishing's at. Cody, Cody, I'll come for dinner. Your parents will love me. I'm a chemical engineer who grew up in uh, Edmonton, Alberta. Oh, that's that's hilarious. Yeah, my whole family, they're pretty much all engineers except for uh, me and my sis. So, <laughs> I've, I've worked for all the big oil companies as a summer really? Yeah. That's fun. Yeah, my dad, my dad was a uh, VP of British Petroleum up there and then he did, it was arco way back in the 90s and that's why we moved down to texas i don't know if you ever heard of them interesting but but back to that networking question do you like like do you talk oh, yeah. so, to guys regularly do you call them on the phone uh it, it kind of depends i mean like i'm not gonna lie i kind of keep my circle pretty pretty small um life can kind of get overwhelming uh and move pretty pretty fast especially uh now that i've got a one-year-old that i'm you know here in florida dealing with and uh and so, I mean, networking, uh, it, I guess it can be vague. I mean, for the ones that I call my friends, of course, yeah, I kind of text them here and there. Um, I'm busy and I'm not even that big, a, like, not that I'm a big deal at all, but these, some of these guys are super duper busy. So I, I usually won't reach out to them unless it's something uh, important or if I'm running into them at an event or, you know, maybe I'll send them a DM for something on their, uh, on their IG story. But 
you know, uh, people are pretty busy, uh, I think, as, as you know, life, life goes. Um, so I, I think, I don't know, I guess I could reach out to some of them more. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, networking overall with the bodybuilding man, like I just went down and I trained in Sarasota today with one of my buddies, uh, Chris, he's a, another bodybuilder uh, here in the area. And, you know, pretty much everyone's uh, cool with each other. I think um, a lot of, a lot of, at least m me and myself, I, uh, we keep our circle small, um, you know, but I think that's just because we are so focused and, and like uh, we were talking about earlier, we get like not laser focused, uh, you know, time. Like I just got done competing in June, you know, for, for three or four months, I really, I wasn't focusing on, you know, friendships and things like that, even though I probably should have a little bit. I always preach balance, but, uh, you know, you get laser focused. I think all the best bodybuilders have a little bit of a loner personality because it is such an individual sport and so much of it is individual. Like, I mean, even if you have a training partner, you're eating your meals by yourself, you're doing your cardio by yourself. And at the end of the day, you're stepping on stage by yourself. I mean, Jay Cutler has said a lot of times, like, I, I do have kind of a loner personality. So I, I get it. It makes sense. Yeah. No, I'm, I'm very similar in that, you know. Um, I just like having a little bit of space, have my time to myself. Um, and especially just with how not stressful, but I mean, bodybuilding is pretty stressful. It's constant 24 hour job. So, um, you know, for me to be able to um, enjoy just, you know, sitting back and, and hanging out on the couch by myself and, you know, watching some TV or playing some video games. Um, you know, that's like me going out, right? <laughs> Talk, talk to us a little bit about your wife. How long is, how long have you been dating her? Has she been by your side your entire bodybuilding career? Um, so we are not actually married, but um, we've been together off and on now for the last uh, few years. We've been, um, you know, obviously having a, a baby young has been uh, a little bit of a test on both of us. But, um, you know, I'm back here in Florida I'm trying to make things as good as I can. And, um, you know. I'm hopeful for the, uh, for the future, for all of that. But, uh, she's been very, very supportive of bodybuilding and, you know, me always, uh, you know, always pushing me and, and wanting me to, you know, be the best version of myself, uh, you know, but then also she sees the behind the scenes and, and, you know, what a lot of people don't see, um, you know, which is, which is the not side effects, I will say of bodybuilding, but, you know, it is extremely stressful. You know, it is, um, you know, I'm 24, but, I do feel like I might be a little bit older than that, um, you know, at times. And, you know, I'm a, I'm a realist with things, um, you know, and she knows that I don't want to bodybuild forever. Um, so she's always, you know, pushing me to, to really, you know, start working on other things, uh, you know, for, for our future and for my future and, you know, just being the best version of myself uh, always. So, so what does the future look like the next year, next three years, next five years? What can we expect out of you in the future in terms um, of bodybuilding? Uh, shows um, can we one day see you on a really big bodybuilding Mr. Olympia do you see that happening or is that something not even in your uh, radar no I mean absolutely I mean that was my goal this year I mean uh, you know I, I started out the year thinking I was going to do classic um, you know just having my kid and having um, you know some of the stuff happened in my life obviously you know with the passing of Dallas McCarver last year um, just a lot of things uh, uh, you know, my, my love for bodybuilding is the same, but my uh, willingness to go to the extra 3,010% is, uh, is voided a little bit. Um, so yeah, I, I still, I still want to get on Olympia stage. You know, I don't think I was that far off this year. Um, you know, in Toronto, I had a, it was a close show, um, you know, me and Zane battling out and now Zane's going to be, you know, representing at the, uh, at the Olympia. So, you know, for me to be getting second to somebody like that, um, you know, I'm, I'm happy, but of course I want to get to Olympia. So that's of course going to be, you know, my, that was my goal from the very, very beginning. Um, but definitely, um, you know, next year, um, I guess this would be the announcement, but you know, it's going to come out in a black sun video in a few weeks, but I'm going to be probably going back to the open. I'm just going to really just try to focus on doing a show and doing a, uh, prep and not being focused on a weight and being concerned about, um, you know, fitting into a certain category because me making 212 was a real pain in the ass. I'm not going to lie. Um, it was very, very brutal. You know, I sat in the sauna um, for the last few hours before, you know, trying to make weight for Toronto. And 
Dallas was no different. I just did it in a hot shower. So, I mean, it was not, it was not easy. You know, I barely drank any water. It was just, it was, it wasn't like I was chasing my best physique. So I didn't feel um, like 212 was my ultimate uh, fit. Um, you know, I'm kind of an in-betweener. Um, so that's kind of why I just want to prep next year, see where I end up. And that's, you know, where I'll end up and where you guys will see me next year. I'll probably end up doing um, a decent show, nothing crazy big. I'm not going to like start out doing, you know, the Arnold or anything like that, especially if I'm doing open, but you would see me at, uh, you know, one of the smaller uh, local shows here, probably in the States and hopefully have a good, nice long year um, next year and do a couple shows in a row. Um, you know, I did two, two shows this year, but it's kind of, you know, I wanted to do a couple more. It's just extremely hard on my body uh, making that weight and making that weight class. Um, but I, I love getting back on stage. I've been almost, uh, I think over two years. Um, so it definitely re-sparked that, uh, that, that passion and that love for the stage. Uh, I just am always conscious and uh, very patient with my time. Um, and I'll be, you know, patient this time getting back on stage and I, I'm going to do it when I feel like I'm ready. So probably early 2019. Cody, you're 24, man. You got lots <laughs> of time. There's no need to rush stuff. I mean, yeah, I mean, that's, that's been my whole thing. I mean, really like if you'd asked me what my plan was until December, I'm going to be playing with my son and enjoying as much dad time as I can before, you know, I got to buckle down and get serious again. So, you know, I'm all about balance and, uh, and I'm all about, you know, that I, I do have some time and, and uh, everyone out there watching this young guy that, that is sitting there, you only have one life, you know what I mean? So you got to have balance in your life. And, and on top of that, you really got to be smart um, and be selective with doing these shows because it is, it's a lot on your body. It's a lot on your mind. It's a lot on your family. It's a lot on everything. So, you know, I've always been extremely selective with all my shows, um, you know, even as an amateur. I only really competed once a year. So, you know, just keep that in mind. You don't got to do a lot of shows to, to be successful and get your name out there and uh, just be smart. So speaking of that, Cody, I always like to ask an economic question to you. So you started getting pretty deep in bodybuilding at a young age. How are you bringing in the money to um, make a living? Because we've had um, other guys on, some of them just plain don't work. All they do is bodybuild. Are you working? On the side, you do coaching. Um, what have you been doing the past few years to make ends meet financially? So when I started out um, bodybuilding, obviously I was in high school. So I was living at home, had my mom buying some of my groceries. Uh, you know, I had <laughs> the local sponsor. <laughs> yeah. The local sponsor uh, was hooking me up with some of my supplements and life was easy. Life was good. You know, I signed my first contract uh, when I was 18. I was still senior in, in, co or in senior in college, uh, senior in high school. Um, you know, it was like, honestly, looking back, it was a very, very small contract, uh, you know, comparative to now. Um, but at the time I didn't have any bills. So it was like free, not free money, but you know, I was a kid still. So at that time I was like, man, my, my eyes lit up and I was like, this is going to be awesome. Right. Um, and then I moved off to school. My parents, obvious, uh, very, Fortunately enough, um, you know, get, uh, paid for paid for me to go off to college, and I lived off of uh, whatever the amount of money that you were supposed to live uh, if you were in the dorms or whatever, you know, the, whatever amount of money, and then whatever over that I had to to pay out of my contract, or whatever at the time, which, like I said, was not a lot. So reality started to hit, um, and then I went and won some more shows. The contracts got a little bit better. Um, I've been very fortunate that I haven't had to work pretty much the entire time. Uh, after USA's, um, I was 20. I was a sophomore in, in uh, college at the time. Was, yeah, I was a sophomore in college. It was this year, uh, summer after my sophomore year. And, uh, you know, after USA's happened, I would say that's when it kind of became like, okay, this is like enough to to really live off of and not have to – like I dropped down to school. I, I pretty much went full time with it because, you know, Blackstone had a lot of opportunity with me. I, I signed with Flex Magazine at the time. Um, you know, I had probably after USA is like, you know, 10 plus sponsors uh, all paying me. Uh, you know, so I, it was I've been very fortunate. And and like Tre uh, Trevor said earlier, um, I've always been very business like with this stuff. Um, so as soon as I started to see that I could turn it into uh 
I guess, what, what do you call it? Um, turning into profits, what I was doing, because I love bodybuilding. Uh, I really went hard with it. And I've been, you know, especially looking after somebody like Jay, I've always um, seen the business side of it and seen the opportunities with all of it. And, you know, for the last few years, I've trained people um, online. I do uh, coaching, online coaching, you know, not anything crazy. I don't try to push it a ton because I don't want to take over my life and I want to be able to focus on the, the people that I do have um, and give them, you know, the right kind of time and the attention that I, I would want. Um, and then I also have started, you know, a clothing company, uh, T Montgomery clothing, um, kind of with the help of Jay Cutler. Um, I started that two years ago. Um, so I've been doing that for the last two years and I've been fortunate enough to have, you know, Blackstone labs behind me. And now just recently signed with Jed North. Um, you know, and throughout the years I've been with a ton of really, really good sponsors. Um, you know, I've had Sheik's been in my corner, um, for the last, three years. Um, you know, so I've been really fortunate to link up with good companies and then also, um, just kind of have my mindset as to, uh, you know, the whole business behind bodybuilding. Cause there, it's not like any other sport. You don't just turn pro in the, you know, in the in MLB you turn pro and you're making bank. You don't have to do anything. You just sit there and you play in bodybuilding. There's a lot of money to be made. I'll say a lot. There's some money to be made. Um, but you got to be aggressive about making it and you got to be very um, proactive. And if you, if you don't try to make the money, it won't come to you. Talk, talk just a bit about social media and how that's changed things. Cause as you know, print magazines yeah. are pretty much dead now. Like I don't think flex is even yeah. on contracts anymore. So I, how, how has yeah. social media changed things for you? Well, I can, I can tell you, um, I, I won't say anything bad, but I was under a contract with Flex and I ended up getting dropped um, just because one of my parents' sponsors wasn't spending X amount of dollars with them. So, I mean, if they are sponsoring anybody now, it's, it's all, you know, it's all linked to something else, um, sadly. Um, but, you know, I'm, I'm good friends with, uh, I won't say any names just because I don't know the respect of them, but a couple pros from, you know, back in the day of the, the good old 90s uh, bodybuilding um, and it really even the early 2000s um, and that talking to them and then seeing it now social media has changed bodybuilding and just really the industry like 360 um, just I mean but for the simple fact that you know I mean in the 90s you wouldn't find out in New York who who did or, or, or I don't even I think the Olympia was in New York in the nineties, but you know, other coast wouldn't even find out who won the Olympia for weeks at a time. And now you, you know, you have people live streaming it um, online. So, you know, the whole paper thing, getting your information through, uh, through a magazine paying seven or eight, nine dollars sometimes for, you know, a magazine that was getting thinner and thinner. Um, you know, social media just kind of took its place and it kind of kicked that out of its door, sadly. Um, but it's kind of changed the, the way bodybuilders um, have to, you know, make their money. Um, you know, I'm one of the fortunate ones that have, a, uh, you know, a contract, uh, you know, like my Blackstone contracts enough to where, you know, I could live off of that. And not a lot of bodybuilders now have that kind of contract, uh, you know, with any of these companies, let alone just one company. Um, so with that, you know, being said, it's just the, it's just the, the whole fact of doing everything yourself now. So you've got YouTubers, you've got people that can give you all this information that magazines used to try to give you and try to pay, you know, these guys for Sue's amount of money just to have them, you know, under one contract with a, with a company. And now, you know, if that company came to, you know, say Bob and gave him, you know, $10,000 to not talk to any other magazines, but then he goes and posts on his social media every day, everyone's going to go to social media. They're not going to read the magazines. So it's changed in many aspects. How, how much time do you spend on Instagram, Cody? Honestly, probably way less than I did, did before. Now it seems like a damn job, but <laughs> no, I probably, I, I honestly probably average um, at least an hour on Instagram a day. I'm sure you follow people who like every hour they're adding to their story. Um, oh yeah. I mean, honestly, I, I could, I'll say one right off the bat, just because I was watching a story this morning, it makes me laugh. But Zane Watson, guy that beat me in Toronto, um, you know, he's got a he's got a little kid, he's a couple of years older than mine. But I watch his story every day. It's like 
20 minutes long. Um, but that's like one of my morning routines, you know, it's just sad, like, uh, not sad, but the, the way that, you know, Instagram and social media has made our life, you know what I mean? It's, it's, it's a great thing. It's a crazy thing, but it's also changed. Uh, I mean, I, I think it's changed bodybuilding and not a bad way, but it's, it's made it a lot harder for, for, uh, you know, these bodybuilders to have like, I guess the security, um, that we, that at least I feel like they deserve. What about, uh, the YouTubes, YouTubes, uh, what are your favorite guys to watch on there or, or you not watch it? Because everyone's not, addicted to YouTube. No? I'm, yeah. See, I'm like not huge on YouTube. I'll go on there, but, um, most of my YouTube stuff, like, I'm not gonna lie. Like, not that I'm burnt out on bodybuilding, but like, I enjoy other things. So I've been watching like some fishing channels. I've been watching like some, <laughs> hunting channels like i just kind of go on there and kind of just stream more than anything i don't really have like a a loyal one person um or two people that i watch i know my girl watches like jeffree star every single day and i wish i could get something like that going because Who, who's like, that oh yeah, my gosh <laughs> I'm just kidding. Yeah. so what, what kind of what, <laughs> what kind of fishing do you guys have over there in sarasota you probably have what um redfish right well, I, I just trying. kind of recently got back into fishing, and it's been red tide over here. So we yeah, were, that's right. Yeah, that we sucks. We haven't done any salt, um, but I've just been doing some freshwater. I mean, I'm from Texas, so I, I've been you know just bass fishing, just what I know how to do. I need to probably come out to your side and get some some freshwater tips. Well, we get the Lake Okeechobee; they dump water on our side too, so it oh. gets polluted. Yeah, Florida's uh, one thing you'll learn about Florida. We're uh, one of the most backward states in the country when it comes to the environment. So they crazy. just dump all the fresh water into the ocean. Who cares? Kill the fish. It's crazy. Yeah. yeah. Like I just, I mean, I just had my, my cameraman in town. He's from uh, San Marcos, Texas last week. And we were like, he was like, Hey, let's go to the beach. And I told him about red tide. He like looked it up. He's like, man, this actually happens every year. And he's like, what the fuck? He was like, so surprised. Yeah. yeah it's but, a real, it's a real problem. There's like, I don't know. It's a mess. Um, so like, every single year? Well, they dump – whenever the Lake Okeechobee gets too high, they dump the water because the farmers, the sugar farmers and stuff, can't have their crops flooded. So we got we to gotta protect the 200 sugar farmers and pollute our oceans. Now there's, you know, like there's the, millions of people. Well, that makes sense. You know, that makes sense. But the sugar lobby is pretty strong in Florida. Yeah. That's crazy, man. That so you mentioned, crazy. like, um, Dallas McCarver earlier. Were you friends with him? What, what can you tell um, us about okay. Dallas? Um, so going back to the whole um, Florida thing, going way back um, to earlier in the interview, I actually moved out to Boca Raton, Florida, um, originally two years ago. Um, PJ uh, offered me a new contract uh, with some, like, you know, incentives to move down there, be close to the company, be, you know, get in the headquarters uh, a couple times a week and, and really, you know, be, have little bit more hands-on um, with the company and kind of get some more content out and just have stuff more in-house. Um, so I made the big move at the time. Um, you know, my girl is from, uh, from Florida. So it kind of worked out a little bit. She's from this side. Um, so at the time we were living a little farther away. Um, but I, that's why I ended up moving to Boca. Um, but at the time, obviously, uh, anybody that follows Dallas, he actually moved out there too um for redcon uh so we were both in the same city i saw him at the gym you know in the morning sometimes when he was getting done with his cardio um we weren't like buddy buddy um i was kind of went to a different gym than him and i didn't really see him that much but i you know i still saw him and, and we chatted every now and then so you know it still hit me pretty hard um definitely uh i think that that and having my son have been the two changing not changing points, um, but biggest, um, I guess, um, life lessons that I've learned this far, as far as uh, just, you know, you can't take anything for granted and just be really, you know, smart, obviously with, you know, everything you're doing. Cody, this is, this is a perfect segue to some of the listener questions we've got. Are you facing any health consequences from, you know, starting bodybuilding so young, especially, you know, dabbling around with like the super supplements at such a young age? Um, are you on TRT or anything like that? No, I mean, I'm, I'm perfectly fine. Like I, I'll just be real with you guys. I haven't taken uh, any supplements since actually the, the last show I did. Um, you know, I'm just kind of a, now where I'm at in life, I try to not, um, 
revolve my life around all of uh, all of that. But I definitely, I, I think I've probably um, put myself at some risk. I don't know exactly, um, you know, the, the effects that I've done, um, but I'm definitely one of those people, I think about everything I do, um, as you can probably tell. And, uh, you know, I, I plan very uh, accordingly and I'm very smart with things, but at the same time, um, you know, reality is reality. And, you know, you only have one body. And I know that, um, you know, I've probably done some, some, some wear and tear on my body. I think I could have probably done a lot more wear and tear. I think I've been pretty smart um, along the way um, for what it is and the things that I've done. Um, but I, that always crosses my mind, you know, and, and that's kind of um, was behind, you know, some of my decision to going um, into classic. I'm not facing anything now, obviously. It's not like I have some crazy issue or, you know, I mean, the only thing that I'm facing right now is, uh, you know, I'm a perfectionist and it's like, as a bodybuilder, you want to have everything perfect. And, uh, you know, I have, a, I have a slight, a uh, slight bit of gyno built up and I probably should get that removed. I mean, it's, it's very minuscule. Um, but you know, as a perfectionist, that's just the kind of things you would, you would do to, for stage. Um, but you know, I mean, that's, that's, I mean, it's, it's, not that it's terrible, but, you know, me, I talked to my parents about it and it's just, you know, it's, it is, it's the reality of things, you know? Um, but that's the reality that I knew that I was taking, you know, when I um, decided to, to cross paths when I was, man, I was, I think I was like 18, 19, whatever. Um, you know, I started making some money and I was like, man, I really love this anyways. Um, I obviously wish that people early on, um, you know, obviously I had great people to look up to, but I wish people were a little bit more real with me. Um, because obviously when you get in situations, it's like, you know, I've been in, I've been in contracts that say that I have to do a certain show. Not, not that that's been the case anytime, anytime recently, but, um, and then you're putting on, you know, even if you don't want to do something, then all of a sudden you have to do something, um, you know, to put food on your table and you're putting your body, um, in, you know, in possibly in harm's way. Um, so, you know, that's kind of, I always, just be very selective with my shows. I'm always very smart with my supplements. I'm always very smart with, uh, you know, pretty much everything. I always think everything out and I'm always uh, aware. Um, but I definitely think that uh, people need to be careful. I think they need to be conscious. I think that they need to listen to the right people. And I think they always need to uh, think before they do. Cody, what would your advice be for some young guys listening to this podcast? You know, maybe an 18 year old version of yourself, you know, someone who loves bodybuilding, they want to make it a career. They're thinking about venturing down, you know, venturing over to the dark side. And it's, it's a rock and a hard place. It's something where there's really no right answer because you wouldn't be in the position you are today if you didn't make that decision. But at the same time, you're young. And when you're messing around with your hormones that age, you might experience some long-term side effects. What would you tell them? Yeah. There's no right, there's no right answer here. No, I mean, there really isn't. And that's probably one of the hardest questions because um, you can look at it two ways. You can look at it as, you know, my heart and, and you know, how I feel for bodybuilding and how I, how that person feels for bodybuilding. And then you can also think about morally and you can think about, you know, their, their family and, and the ethics behind that, you know, just um, I would say to them to one think before you do always and uh, to two um, if you really are going to make that, that choice, know and do your research to know that that's the choice that you want to make. A lot of these people make choices and they don't realize the consequences. I think if you know the consequences, um, you know all the consequences, the bad ones, the things that could not happen, the things that could happen, whatever, the things that will happen. Um, I think if you know all that and you have an educated, um, if you've been educated about it and you, you make that that decision at that point, because you, you know, all the, the possible side effects and all the possible consequences of making that decision. Um, I think that's a point where, um, you know, maybe you're, you're ready, but probably still not. Uh, most people I think can, um, really benefit, uh, look at Ronnie Coleman. He's a perfect example. Um, you know, looking back at myself and, and being in that, in those young shoes, um, you know, maybe I could have been a little bit more patient, you know, and, and, and reach my genetic potential, maybe, you know, 10% more or 20% more. And then what, you know? Um, so I always tell people that uh, it really is dependent on the person. Um, but make sure that you've been lifting for a long time. Dieting is 
on point and has been on point for a very long time and that you have, you, you've been educated about it and that you know the consequences and that that is something that um, you're okay with. What are some uh, things when you mentioned diet, give us some nugget, you know, give us a nugget in the past year or two, something that, you know, like the switch has turned on you, something you were doing before that now you realize, wow, you know, you changed it and you're like, wow, I'm getting so much better results in terms of muscle building and, and losing fat. Because a lot of our listeners obviously want to build more muscle and lose fat, you know? So what are some diet changes that have really took taking you to the next level that you can share with us? Um, well, I would say the main thing with, um, with me and myself is having a goal um, with the diet just because – I mean, at least myself, I know the foods to eat. I know the, the things to do. It's just more so having that routine. Um, obviously, uh, for someone out there that's looking to lose weight, um, you know, if you're, if you're starting from scratch as far as you don't have any kind of diet, um, you know, I usually suggest, you know, uh, someone, you know, at least starting to write down what they're eating and kind of getting in, a, in a, an idea of what's coming in their mouth and, and what kind of expenditures they're doing throughout the day as far as uh, their activities. And, you know, um, then you can kind of sit there and you can look and be like, wow, you know, I'm eating a lot and I'm not doing anything throughout the day. So why, why did I eat that much? Um, you know, even just writing stuff down that simple can make, uh, can make a difference. Um, but really, with diet, um, for me, the last couple years has been more so just having balance and enjoying my, my meals, enjoying the foods that I'm eating, and, uh, and making it kind of fun. Uh, that, that's the best way for me to stay on track, and I think probably the best way for those uh, people out there to on track. If you can make it fun or if you can make it enjoyable in any kind of way, um, you know, eat foods that you do like. I mean, there's a million different foods out there. Um, it's not like you have to eat one food to get shredded. So, um, you know, it's all about enjoying it and uh, having fun with it. And it will be a lot more easy than feeling like it's a damn job, you know. How how has having a child changed things? Oh, man. Um, well, I will say that for the prep, uh, I was back in Texas. Uh, I went back. I uh, just was not, you know, for, for multiple reasons. But... Um, in prep, I can't say because I haven't done a prep. I cannot imagine um, taking care of my son and, and uh, getting ready for a show. Um, that's why I'm not doing one right now. Uh, I could definitely do it. It just changes a lot. Um, but right now, um, you know, like tonight, I prepped. I prepped my chicken for tomorrow, and I made uh, you know dinner. I made chicken and pasta and cut them up fruit and you know I'm doing like different stuff with my diet than I than I usually have to do as far as uh there's more foods in the house uh, that are that are available um so it's been a little bit easier to cheat on my diet so you know that's one of the adjustments um obviously with the, the sleeping he's not uh he's not a terrible baby so I've been blessed with that but honestly uh you know ever since um I've had him you know it's obviously you know it's not like you're you know in high school or whatever you can just take a nap you know, during the day or whatever you need to do. So, you know, you got to plan out your day a lot more. You got to be a lot more schedule oriented. Um, you know, right now he's in swim lessons every day at uh, 920 he starts. So I got to get there at 910. So, you know, I'm, I train at, you know, a certain time in the morning that I can get there uh, just, just in time to make the lesson. And, you know, <laughs> you make a lot of adjustments. I mean, it's definitely, it's definitely uh, doable. Um, but it's, uh, it, at first it doesn't seem like it's doable. That's for sure. It was very overwhelming um, to all the new new dads or expecting dads out there. But I promise you, it becomes the best thing in your life. Talk to us a little bit about Blackstone. So you've been with them for six years. What made you decide to pick Blackstone? And what what is your exact role with them? Um, yeah, so I've been with Blackstone, I guess, since maybe, maybe it's been five years. Um, six years sounds like a long time. But um, I've been um, basically the entire time I've been a, um, you know, a contracted athlete, uh, you know, like one of their, I wouldn't say a spokesperson, I guess maybe in like a more professional setting. That's uh, what some people would say. Um, but I'm just one of their athletes uh, as far as representing their products. And I've been on the road. Um, you know, I do demos for them um, all over the country. I've been, um, you know, to little cities in Illinois all the way up to, we were just in Virginia Beach a few weeks ago. Um, and, 
you know, a lot of, uh, a lot of what I do for, for Blystone and, um, for, for a lot of my sponsors, uh, going back to what you were talking about earlier is uh, social media, uh, related. Um, you know, a lot of, um, my incentives and things like that are through, uh, you know, through the social media, um, I make, you know, posts and doing all that kind of stuff and pushing the product. Um, you know, I've had a little bit of, uh, you know, behind the scenes as far as, you know, um, getting stuff going in the works, uh, over the years, um, putting stuff in PJ's ears, you know, maybe PJ bouncing the thing off of me or, um, you know, one of the guys at Blackstone coming to me with, uh, with an idea or vice versa. Um, you know, it's been really, it's been a very awesome partnership. Um, why did I pick Blackstone? Honestly, at the time, um, man, it's just, it's, it's really sad, but nowadays there's not a lot of companies that, live, breathe, and die bodybuilding. And, uh, you know, I thought, I thought really uh, Blackstone, you know, back when I did join them, they were, I mean, not that they're not hardcore now, but they were very hardcore back then. Um, and they were very bodybuilding oriented. Um, and, you know, I just felt that genuinity from, uh, from, you know, from Blackstone from the get go, as far as just, um, they had a passion to be, you know, to have the best bodybuilders on their team. Um, to have the, you know, the best, uh, representing their, their products because, you know, bodybuilding was selling their brand. And I really loved that. It wasn't, um, you know, them selling their brand. It was, we're making this brand because bodybuilding is awesome. And we want to, you know, give back and make something that's even better than what we've seen, which is exactly what Blackstone is. Um, and, you know, coming, you know, years, years later, um, you know, I guess I can spot good character um but you know pj has been like like i said earlier like a like a second father to me and uh been super loyal to me and blackstone has uh you know had my back when i've been down and uh you know i will always uh bleed blackstone as long as as they let me and uh and i'm really blessed to you know to have them and and to have the role that i do and uh like i said when i did move down to boca i guess my role did increase um you know, I was in the office a couple of times a week. I was calling, you know, some customers and stuff, doing some uh, giveaways and things like that in the office. Um, had a little bit more hands on then than I do now. But, um, you know, now I'm just doing videos, um, obviously, with all the posts and uh, getting on the road, representing all over the country. So speaking of being on the road, I'm going to let Trevor finish up the show because we're almost out of time. But before we do... We'll have a little fun really quick. Um, this is a segment called First and Five. So basically, this is for your fans out there to kind of get to know you um, a little more. So let me hit you with these questions and just answer the first thing that comes to your head. First off, what music is playing in your car when you're driving? Post Malone, probably. What is it? Post Malone. What is that? Country music or something? <laughs> <laughs> Steve, I'll, I'll send you some YouTube videos. Oh, done. is he being serious? I thought I didn't know if he was being serious. No, <laughs> Cody, Cody, oh, Cody. We we had Chris Aceto on the show. Um, I think about five podcasts ago, and okay. I texted Steve. I was like, Steve, you're not going to believe it. We're interviewing Chris Aceto tonight. Like I was starstruck, right? Because Chris Aceto, he's one of the best. Absolutely. Steve says, "Who's Chris Aceto?" <laughs> no, that wasn't who I did say. Uh, I knew who Chris Aceto was. It was a different yeah. guy. But I don't know. I don't know much about um, bodybuilders. So next yeah. question is favorite TV show. Favorite TV show. I would, uh, if I'm going OG, probably SpongeBob. Um, but I, I watch a lot of Family Guy. Okay, Trevor uh, likes SpongeBob too. You know, uh, so you guys both. You know Barack Obama's favorite TV show is SpongeBob SquarePants? Really? I did not know that. But now there's, there's this hilarious cool. YouTube video where he's on a presidential campaign and he's taking questions from the audience. And every question is like, what do you plan on doing with the unemployment rate or what are you going to do about pollution or immigration? <laughs> and this one woman asks, what's your favorite TV show? <laughs> <laughs> and he looks Trevor. at her like, like, is she like, is she for real or is she just an idiot? And, he, and then he answers like in a very professional way, SpongeBob SquarePants. Next question. The president. <laughs> I've never, I've never seen some SpongeBob, but my nephew loves that show. I would like to, I would need to see that episode. So how about this? Happiest day in your life was what? Oh, having my son. Absolutely. Okay, that's an easy one. Yeah, that's, that came to my head. Okay, if I put you on a tropical island for two weeks, two things that you would take with you. 
like back with me from the island? No, no, no. That, that if, if oh, I put you, yeah, oh, I'll yes. I'm gonna carve. A you only get to take two things. What is it? <laughs> uh, if I can only take two things, um, my entire pantry. Uh, no, I'm just kidding. Uh, a backpack of survival gear and a self. I uh, probably can't get service. Uh, a spear fish thing to okay to that's a good eat. idea because i probably can't bring my whole my whole uh, pantry all right <laughs> i thought you were gonna say uh a fire starter that would have been good um, I'm gonna start okay. fire. A, a fish stick to the spears to fish and then a flint starter that's you're gonna have to eat the fish raw if you don't bring, bring yeah, a laptop I'm sushi, uh, probably, <laughs> the final question here before i let trevor finish the show you got one bodybuilder or fitness celebrity that you would want on your side in a bar fight, who would it be? Oh goodness, um, I'm gonna say Branch Warren at a bar fight. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I just see him busting somebody over the head with a bottle. Yeah, he's a big guy, so you'd be good with him. <laughs> that would be, that would be. Cody, we're at the end of our show here. I got one last question for you. Your okay. son, are you hoping to get a, a future bodybuilder out of him? Honestly, don't take no offense to it, but I hope he's a musician. I like I like music growing up too, but he's he's like playing drums every day and all this stuff, and it's bringing me back to my days. But he can do whatever he wants, you know. I mean, obviously, if he wants a bodybuild, that's his decision, and I would love it. But uh, I don't really want to like want it for him because then I'll definitely push it on him, and I don't want to do that. Um, I don't want to push anything on him. Cody, for our listeners, especially the young guys who want to follow in your footsteps, if they want to hire you for your coaching services find out more about your clothing line, what would be the best way for them to do that? Check out my website, um, Cody Dash, just it's a mid score, uh, Montgomery.com. Uh, and then there's a couple of different tab sections you can go under and check out the clothes or you can check out the uh, online coaching services. Um, or anytime you have any questions, you can just DM or not DM me, uh, email me at uh, teammontgomerytraining at gmail.com. Cool. And what do you have in your clothing line? Is it just t-shirts? You got everything. T-shirts, I've got some shorts, uh, I've got shaker bottles, um, but mostly, mostly T-shirts. Are you, are you making some decent sales of that? Um, I have been in the past. I haven't been pushing as much. Um, being in Texas, my inventory was here in Florida, so I didn't really uh, want to fulfill a ton of order, sell a lot of stuff and then not be able to fulfill the orders. Um, so I'm kind of getting back into the, the swing of things, but I was for, for the first uh, year or so. One uh, one guy at my gym, he trains with a Cody Montgomery t-shirt. Hey, take a picture with him and send it to me, man. That would be so funny. His name's Anthony. He's he's uh, he's gonna watch the podcast once it's once it's up. Oh, that's what's up. That's what's up, man. So there's there's one at least one person in Winnipeg has bought your clothing. Hey, one. I I mean I've definitely sent some packages up to Canada. Definitely, and that's like loyal people supporting because it's like twenty five dollar. Um, postage fee. <laughs> Canada, Canada actually has um, a really loyal bodybuilding community. Yeah, no, absolutely, absolutely. I, I really, uh, I know this last time I was up in Toronto was uh, Zane's World, um, but every time I've been to Toronto um, or any anywhere in Canada, really, um, even I've been to uh, British Columbia, and everyone's been more than nice, man. I love it up in Canada. I'm actually going to Toronto next month. Okay, cool. Um, is the reason for that is because when it's so cold, there's nothing else to do. I yeah, mean, like yeah. when you're in Florida, you can go fishing, you can go running on the beach, you know, you can, you can buy a boat when it's no. minus 30. What do you do? You, you, you go to the gym and you go home and wait to do it again. You got all your, you got to get all your frustration out that it's not sunny out and hot in the gym, taking it out on the weights. Right. So Cody, we really appreciate you coming on the show. Guys, give Cody a follow on his social media. Check out his clothing line. He's a good guy. I can't believe he's only 24. I mean, his wisdom is way beyond his age. For your host, Trevor Kuritsen, for my co-host, Steve Smee, and for our special guest, IFBB Pro, Cody Montgomery, this has been another episode of Evolutionary Radio. Live your life. Look good doing it. Thanks for listening.